Hey, boss, thanks for supporting the show today. It looks great. Hey, Emmanuel, do we look good on the board in here? Looking good. Hey, heater, camera ready? Looks great. Three, two. Welcome to the Golf Kingdom, where you thought planking was a fad. Well, you know what? We're bringing it back to help your game. It's my plank show, where I'm going to use planks to help your game. Let's bring in the blueprint here as we talk about what we're doing tonight. We're going to start right off with the build-it segment. I'm going to help you improve your game using little wooden planks. After that, it's going to be the kiss segment. Yeah, Mwah. keep it simple, Strano. Something very simple and easy to help your game. After that, we're going to go pop culture, and we're going to throw some elbows out here. Our elbow throwing is not good for your putting. After that, it's going to be strategy. I'm going to talk about your par 5 play and maybe give you some strategy to help your game. And as always, we're going to finish with one of my favorite segments. We're going to close with, it's a time to rise. Uh, oh. No planking. Oh. No planking in the ah. you know uh, Are you ready? It's, it's time to build in the golf kingdom. Welcome to the number one golf variety show in the world, the golf kingdom. Are you ready to build your game? Here's your host, Rob Strano. Well, it's time to start building here, and I've got some great plank drills to help your swing. And instead of a wooden plank, we're going to go with a yardstick. Yardsticks are everywhere, these nice little wooden ones. You can get them all over the place. I bet you even have one already at home. I like to give you drills you can do with common things around the house, not building some elaborate contraction, contraption. So here's what I've got, a regular yardstick. Now, let's talk about two errors in the golf swing and how this simple yardstick can help you. First off, let me grab a golf club here, and I'm going to explain something. Daredevil, come to the wide view for me. If you take your video and you find yourself, when you swing, jumping up on your toes. So I've got a couple of players, when they swing back, they go back and they move up on their toes when they swing back, or they swing down an impact, and they swing down and they jump to their toes. Here's a simple plank drill using your yardstick. So throw your yardstick on the ground. You're going to now stand on it and run it right through the arch of your shoe. So I'm going to put the arch of my shoe right over the middle of the yardstick, just like this. So when I swing, I never want the bulk of my pressure on my feet to move to this side of the stick. So I'm going to swing and try to move, as I should going back, into my trail heel. So I stay on this side of the stick, and then I start down. I come back to the middle of the stick, right through the middle of my feet. So trail heel, middle of my feet, and then from here, I turn to impact, and I stay off my toe. I try to feel like my lead shoe, the toes are coming up. I'm not getting over here like that as I swing down. I don't want to swing down and come down and go there. That leads to very inconsistent ball striking and standing up. And if you're a top row of the ball, you might just be jumping to your toes. So keep it right through the middle of your shoes. As you go back, get into the heel, come down middle of your shoes, and then into the lead heel as you get here at impact. Now, Another problem I see is, in the backswing, this hip jumping out too soon. So the trail hip just spins to start back. Grab your plank again. So I'm going to grab my yardstick. I'm going to take it, and I'm going to put it right on my trail hip here. So as I swing back, I want to hold that hip as I go back. I don't want it to fly out. I want it to stay right there. So if I move it too quick, oops, I'm going to drop the stick. I don't want to do that. I want to hold it right there until my hands have passed the stick. So this keeps me calm. It keeps me in constant contact with the club. I can feel the head, I can feel the shaft, and I know where it is. If I spin that hip to start back, whoops, let me get it in the right spot here, right there on the hip. If I spin it, whoops, if I spin it right away, it drops, and I lose control of the club. Two great plank drills. You've got the standing on it to control your pressure and not getting to your toes, and then lean it up against your trail hip. Lean it right here and make sure that spinning that hip start back and you have a nice calm start back. These two plank drills will help your ball striking a lot on the golf course. Okay, let's talk fitness and golf now. And I'm going to bring up something I bet you don't even realize because it's an adaptation that we all make over time. Yeah, as we reach a greater vintage in life, we start to adapt and do things the same way all the time. I wouldn't even realize it. You know what? 
It affects your golf game and your golf swing and your setup. And I'm gonna explain it, and this is gonna be an all skate. So everybody get up, get off your couch, come up closer to your TV sets, your screens, because this is something I need everybody to do together. And if you're ever at my academy, you'll see this happening a lot. I'll use the curb by the, by the putting green to have my players do this drill. But you know what? It's plank day, so we're gonna use the stick. So have a stick or a straight edge, whatever you've got. Daredevil, come to the big screen view. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna drop this on the ground. I wanna show you what happens to our bodies over time. And here's how you do this. You're gonna walk up to your straight line, your grout line, your stick, your curb, and you're gonna put your toes perpendicular to the stick or the curb or the line. Make sure they're at 90 degree angles. You're gonna stand up straight, get your shoulders back, and what I want you to do is get your, your reference, look down at your straight line, stand up, and then close your eyes and start to feel what you, what's going on internally here. Do you feel your body twisted any directions? With your eyes closed and kind of knowing where the straight line is, you'll start to feel your hip or your shoulder twisted out of position. This isn't a chiropractic, chiropractic issue, this is an adaptation. I'm a right hand dominant person. My trail arm is the one that's always ready. This arm is my helping arm. I only ask for it when, oh, you need me to hand you this? Look, I just asked for the left arm. Hey, Rob Strano, nice to meet you. Okay, let me throw this to you. The right arm, are you gonna sign that? The right arm, it's always in the ready position. So what happens is, when I get myself square to something here, and I stand up, this side is always gonna be pitched out. So the sagittal plane is called this line, if I cut myself in half. This side over here, my trail side in golf, but my dominant side in life, starts to come out this way because it's always got to be ready, ready to defend myself, ready to throw a punch, whatever it is, it's always in the ready spot. When you get set up to, to, uh, to chip, putt, take a full swing, that's why you see tour players, we're always squirming ourselves this way, trying to get back to square because we're trying to get this side back into a neutral position. So get your stick, get your straight line, get your curb, get in there and take this little test. Stand up, relax, and see if you feel yourself twisted any way. About 90% of the people that I work with find that the trail side is popped out. Do this and you'll understand better how you have to work your body to get set up to hit better shots. Well, this is our quick action segment, Keep It Simple, Strano, or the Kiss Mwah! segment where I give you something really quick, really easy, really fast, to help your game. Now there's something weird that happens in golf and what I want you to do is take some video of you from the knees down. Video of your swing just looking at your footwork. If when you swing and you start down the lead heel moves away from the target like this you are definitely going to go over the top. It is a cause and effect move. If this heel pops inward like that as you start down we come over the top. Now I've got a simple drill you're gonna do to help you stop doing that, and it should clean up that over the top move a little bit in the downswing. You're gonna grab your plank, and for this one, I've got an actual two by four, because you want something big here. So Ed, I like that. You can hear that's a solid piece of wood there. So the two by four, you're gonna put it on your lead heel right here. And your goal is to swing and never move the two by four. If you make that move where that lead heel moves in, you will move the two by four. So you're gonna swing and not do that. See, I moved it and I came over the top and through. Once again, it goes on your lead heel. Foot, foot will be flared out a little bit right there. And when you swing down, swing, shift forward, turn, get right on top of it at impact, and don't move that piece of wood. So you can put anything there, but we're using a piece of plywood, a, a piece of plywood, a two by four, because it's a big thing for you to reference. Put it down there, and again, the wrong move would be doing that. You can see the shoulder's way out. So, two by four, on your left heel. It's the KISS segment. Mwah! That's something super simple. Strano, that's three S's, K-I-S-S-S. -S -S. Keep it super simple, Strano. Put the two by four on your heel, and it should help you not make this funky move that causes you to be over the top. And if you're a slicer, it'll straighten that ball out every time. You want a golf tip that will really make this game easier? Okay, here's mine. The fastest way to get good is by finding a great coach. 
And the fastest way to find that person is through GolfChannelAcademy.com. It'll match you up with the best coaches in your area. And now you can even schedule a new student assessment. So, what are you waiting for? Schedule a training session with your local coach, Rob Strano, from Strano Golf Academy in Destin, Florida at StranoGolf.com. It's our pop culture segment, and you know I have lots of fun with pop culture, and we're going to talk about pop culture phrases here as it kind of relates to the jersey and what I'm going to teach you about putting. And in pop culture, you got phrases that use the word throw, like throw down, throw hands, throw down to the bus. You've even got Lambert's throw rolls. Hey, how about that? I got a little throw roll action. And in basketball, we throw elbows. So in putting, we don't want to throw elbows when we putt. We don't want the elbows throwing around. We want to keep them together and fused to the body. Let me explain that and show you what happens if we start throwing elbows, not on the basketball court, but on the putting green. Daredevil, let's come to the wide screen here. I'm going to grab a putter. And my apologies to everybody out there that's not a Duke fan like me. But hey, this is just repping it here. So a bad putting stroke will have daylight where the elbows show daylight between the body. So if you go forward and finish and you see daylight on your video, that's a throwed elbow going far forward. If you have elbows when you're going back that get away from the body, that's a thrown elbow going back. So if I go back and I throw an elbow and come through and release, I'm going to miss to the left. If I aim at the middle of my target and I go through and I throw an elbow forward, I miss to the right because that blocks the face open. What you want to do is point your elbows at your hip bones and keep them pointed there throughout the stroke. Keep these contact points with your upper body. So when I get set up, elbows to the hips, back and through, bang, right in the middle. Quick way to practice that. Grab your golf glove. If you're seeing daylight here, Put a golf glove under your lead arm, lock it in there, it'll keep it together, and it'll keep you from throwing elbows all over the putting green and get you making a lot more putts. Okay, so it's time to build you a better short game. I've got two drills now to help you with your plank get short game better. Daredevil, let's come to the wide screen. Here's the error I see a lot of players making chipping is, as the club comes back, it comes back to inside and to around them. What I want to do is I want to teach you using this yardstick an easy way to get this thing online coming back. And it's from our perspective that kind of distorts it. And you're going to see, we go to this low view in a second. Daredevil, give me the low view. You're going to see how our perspective gets messed up. So from this setup, I want you to bring the club back and feel like you keep it over the yardstick. So from my angle, it looks like it's over the yardstick. But when you see it on camera, it's actually coming inward a little bit. That's how you want it to move. Not that much, just a little. And you can chip off your yardstick at home and chip it right into a trash can straight ahead of you. So one more time, ball on the yardstick. And now what I'm going to do is keep the club moving over the yardstick and then chip it straight ahead right into the bucket. Now, let's come back to the wide view, Daredevil. Second one, if you struggle with contact, that was for path. If you struggle with contact, get a ruler. You don't need the big yardstick get a ruler. What you're going to do is you're going to stand with your lead foot, being a right hander, that's my left foot, on the ruler. I'm going to set up, put the ball in position. I'm going to come up on my right toe or my trail toe. This is going to calm my body. Now when I chip, I get my good path. I hit a nice, crisp, little clean chip forward. If I recruit my body and hips, I'm going to knock myself over. So two great drills, yardstick for your path, and to get the body calm and get your balance under control, we have the left foot, right toe, or just lead foot down, trail foot up, swing through. Don't use your body, don't fall over. These drills will help you become a great short game expert as you improve your game and build a better short game. Well, at Golf Kingdom, you've seen all the cool clips we've done to help your game, but I've done videos other places that have gotten to be really, really popular, including something I was honored for recently. Check this out. Golf Channel went through thousands and thousands of hours of instruction videos. They picked their top 100 all time. And luckily, I was selected as one of their top 100 clips. Boy, it's a huge honor considering all the cool stuff. So the Where in the World is Rob segments I filmed on a European vacation made their top 
100. Here's the clips I did from Paris and the wine country that were on Golf Channel that made their top 100. You're probably wondering where in the world is Rob Strano and how is he going to help my golf swing? Check it out. That's the Eiffel Tower and Beaujour from Paris, France. And I'm gonna use the Eiffel Tower to help your golf swing. So let me show you the error people make using the Eiffel Tower coming right up behind my head. When they swing the club, they swing back and they move to the wrong side of the tower. They move that way going back. On the downswing, you move backwards going the wrong way on the downswing. That creates all kinds of swing errors. A correct move looks like this. You're going to move to this side of the tower and then shift forward to that side of the tower. That's the correct way to move when you swing the club. Once again, I'm gonna move that way in the back swing and this way in the forward swing. That's the best way to move, to shift your weight, to hit the golf ball correctly. Right now, I'm in Tuscany, the wine valley of Italy. I'm at one of the top wineries in the world. We're talking 100 point wines. This place is the Jack Nicholas of wineries. Their bottles are all major champions. I just got done with the wine tasting here. So this could be an interesting segment. I may make absolutely no sense. This might be a lot of fun, but my goal is I'm going to help you with your downswing using wine bottles. So I've got two bottles here. Once again, $200 a bottle. The great thing about wine bottles is if they're full, they're heavy. So it'll give you the feeling when you're done of doing it correctly. So the weight stresses your muscles and makes them learn something new. Right now, if the weather's getting bad and it's getting towards winter and you're stuck inside, grab a couple of wine bottles and we're gonna fix your downswing. And at the end, you can drink the wine and have a great evening at home. So here's how it works. You grab the wine bottles by the neck, hold them straight down, and you're going to take your backswing. So swing back, don't bang the bottles. Now when you get to here at the top of your backswing, the bottles are equal. Take your, your back hand and take this wine bottle and bend it this way. So you kind of make an L with the two wine bottles. Now what you're going to do is you're going to swing down and don't bang the bottles together. Do this slowly to start with. So right here, slowly come down and don't bang the bottles. You'll teach this trail hand how to lag the club and keep this lined up. So go to the top, bend that one back, hold it coming down, and line it up. Well, I hope you had as much fun watching those two tips as I had doing them in Paris with the Eiffel Tower and with two really expensive wine bottles in the wine country of Italy. Practice those tips. They're great things to help your game, to get you to move correctly in the backswing and to hold lag in the downswing. Just remember that wine bottle tip. Don't use two expensive bottles and bang them together and have wine all over your floor. But such an honor to be one of the top 100 tips of all time on Golf Channel. And I get to keep bringing you great stuff here on the Golf Kingdom. Alexa, open Golf Kingdom. Alexa, stop. If you want more pro pointers from me via your Amazon enabled skill at the Golf Kingdom, be sure to go there and enable it. Every day I give you a new tip free with your Amazon enabled device. So enable the Golf Kingdom and you'll get a tip from me, your host Rob Strano, every day. Okay, let's talk about some strategy on the golf course, especially as it relates to playing those pesky par fives and seeing if we can make some more birdies and eliminate bogeys and doubles. The question is, how do you know when to go for it? Everybody kind of looks at it and guesses. I have a rule I give players, it's called the 60-70 rule. If seven out of 10 times you can blast it down there and not get out of position, not incur a penalty, or get in a spot where you can make bogey or double, knock it down there, and if you don't get it on, your wedge game will chip it up there and you'll make a putt. If it's six out of 10 times, 60%, then you think about it because you know what? 60% is too close to 50-50. And 50-50 is a chance of trying to knock it down there that's not good. 
So 70%, we go for it. 60%, we start to think about it. Now, let me give you some good examples. I got some par fives we're going to bring up here on the big screen, and we're going to talk about these holes in decision making. And these are some par fives I've played, including two at Whistling Straits this year, where I played them, played them well, and the guys in the 2020 Ryder Cup are going to see these holes on the back nine. Let's bring up the first one here at Whistling Straits. So here's the first image. This is the 11th hole. It's a par five. You drive it down in here between these fairway bunkers, and then you go for the green here. Now, the thing to understand is this bunker right here, it's a pit. It is 50 feet deep. And then this all slopes up to the green. So the green is a rise and then a plateau. Let's go to the 3D view and you can see it a little better here. So you can see you drive it in here. Now you're hitting your shot into the green here and this big deep pit of a bunker is between you and the green and you have an upslope. If you can't fly it onto that green, trust me, that upslope will roll right back down to that bunker or close. If I can't fly it on that green, I'm not going for it. And what I did was I drove it just here in the fairway. I couldn't fly it on top. I laid up down here short of the bunker, and I hit it up there like that and made birdie. Now, this is the 11th hole. Let's flip to the next one. This is the 16th hole, and you're going to see this late in the Ryder Cup. This could be a pivotal hole. Now, you drive it in here, and you have an angle into the green this way, and you can see there's a bunch of bunkers. But they're deep, but not so deep that if you get in them, like I said, you're out of position. So I drove it in here, and I decided this time to go for it. Now, let's go to the wide view, the 3D view, and here's the view. I drove it in here, and this called for a little right to left shot in here. And if I hit it straight, I just ended up in the rough here, no big deal. If I turned it too much, I might roll into that front bunker, no big deal. But if I hit a good one, I'd knock it up on the green. So it was an easy go for it. Now, one more hole to look at. This is Palm Valley Golf Club, which was my home course out in Goodyear, Arizona. This is the second hole. And you can see up by the green, there's nothing in the way. There's two bunkers to the left. You drive it here. You can blast it up there. Even if the ball rolls out in the desert, you can chip it up onto the green. It's an easy go for it all the time. Use that 60-70 rule. Analyze what your go for it look like, and then Go for it or lay back to a good number. But at least you have a way to think about it now with the 60% or 70% ratio. Do this and you'll play the par fives a ton better. Okay, who's ready to walk the plank to help their putting? I got two drills here. We're gonna wrap up the whole plank theme here in the Golf Kingdom to help you putt better. And this is a great one to do at home if you're inside, can't get to the golf course, maybe you've gotten bogged down at work, a great one to use your plank on. Daredevil, throw me over to the big screen here. So here's what we've got. I've got our yardstick laying down. I've got a ball sitting right on top of it. And if you want to, I drilled a little hole in the top of the yardstick to kind of give the ball a spot to sit. What you want to do is the yardstick will help you get set up nice and square here. You won't get yourself twisted. You can always check to see if you're twisted. So number one thing, it'll help you get square. What you want to do is get set up, line up down the stick, and just try to roll the ball right down the yardstick. See, that was perfect. I rolled it right down at the whole length of the way. Let me do it again for you, right in that little hole I pre-drilled. I'm gonna get myself square to the stick. Good ball position. I'm set up and I'm lined up with the stick. I'm gonna try to hit this right along the stick again. Perfect, boom, back to back, right down the stick. When you can't get to the course, throw your yardstick down your plank and roll balls along it, and if you can do that, Boy, those short putts will really look easy because the balls go in the same place every time. Daredevil, throw me back to the tight view. Now, we're going to go back and grab your little ruler. I got my, my Corvette ruler here. I got from Corvette years ago on tour. Watch, glove. What you're going to do is take your glove, put your glove on, loosen your watch up a little bit, and you're going to take this ruler and you're going to run it under your watch and into your glove. So it's under the watch, into the glove, and I'm gonna make sure it sits flush up against my forearm, just like that. So if you come through and you flip, you're too wristy when you putt, put that in there and take practice strokes, get it right down your forearm, take practice strokes, and it's right up against there. I can't break that wrist down. I'd snap the ruler if I were to break that wrist down. So it gives me the feeling of nice, firm hands 
as I roll the ball. So here's what it'll look like. I'll put a ball in here. I'll get set up. Nice, good, firm grip. And then firm hands and arms coming through. See, that's a nice, firm wrist. Do that, and you'll have control of the putter face every time, and you'll hit in the middle and make more putts. Great drills to practice using your planks. There's nothing better than memories, and we make some great memories on the golf course, and we make some great memories in life. You know, it's the great thing about scorecards is you can save them and remember great rounds. I have a special book that I brought as a prop today, and it's a book that I've kept of both my kids, and it's my memory book of famous quotes and little things I've kept from them. So like, for example, my son said one day, he said, Mom and Dad, why were those oranges so sour? And we said, well, because they were grapefruits. And then my daughter one day said, I touched it with my nose and it's hot. And that was how she was checking to see if the corn dog was too hot to bite. She touched it with her nose. And we look back at these great quotes and we laugh. And in, and in here, I've got all kinds of cool things. I've got a ticket stub to a Christian concert my daughter and I went to, Rebecca St. James. And there's football ticket stubs and baseball games ticket stubs my son and I have been to. But it's all the memories that I've shared with them and some of the great things they've said. And what I want you to do is whether you get a book or not and start writing things down or keep scorecards, start to become a collector of memories. As you think about time to rise in life, these little memories you keep, whether they're quotes or scorecards, are things that will help you on those days where you need to rise up. Maybe you wanna have a great round of golf and you wanna remember a great round you played. Like at, at Whistling Straits this year, I shot 71. I'm going to look at that scorecard because you know what? That's going to help me rise up. So time to rise. Look at old scorecards. Keep them. And you know what? You remember those great rounds and have more great rounds after that. Well, I decided to close the show with the Lazy Man's Plank. We gave you some great stuff tonight using planks to improve your game. I hope you get out and practice those. And I hope you get out and join us on social media. Engage with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and on YouTube, where I've cut up the shows and you can find some of your favorite segments of the Golf Kingdom. Also, if you have an Alexa-enabled device, be sure to enable that. You can say, Alexa, open the Golf Kingdom, and get a free tip from me, your host, Rob Strano, every day. Thanks again for joining me here on the Golf Kingdom.